Well, welcome back. Okay, today we're actually going to put something together. Uh, I'm going to get some of the uh, V joint on this bulkhead. <laughs> relatively cheap um, consumer uh, lumberyard V-joint pine. Uh, I think by the time it's on and filled a little bit and tidied up, it'll look fabulous, but we'll see. Um, what has to be done here is a couple of issues here. This um, little chunk of the, uh, the deck, and actually there's a little bit of the canvas on there still from the deck, which is out there, needs to be trimmed off. And I'm just trimming this off very neatly with my fine tool. I won't spark it up because it's noisy and I can't really do it with one hand. And um, the this plane, which is this, in other words, this surface, which is the old bulkhead, is flush with this and it's flush with this and a little bit of filler strips that the previous people have put in. As I've mentioned before, it'd be nice to tidy this all up into something elegant, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cover it up and it will be just fine. I'm assuming the outside is good. It was fiberglassed on the outside, uh, so it's quite secure. What you can see here, as you may have noted before, uh, is the innards of the upstairs helm or the bridge deck helm. Um, and this big opening I've cut here is for the new window and obviously this is in the way, so it's got to go. Uh, so all of this section of the upstairs helm is coming out. The new upstairs helm will be much smaller. And uh, so the next project is to make this window, which I've just finished designing and I'm quite excited about it. It'll be a two pieces of glass, a sliding window. This side will be fixed. This side will be sliding, which is basically over the hallway or companionway where you can walk through here. And um, I'm really looking forward to that because it'll get more air through from here. It'll let more air out and uh, it'll be a much better view aft because right now <laughs> the little porthole that was here didn't give much of a view aft. Of course, I don't have much now with my cheesy uh, garden furniture out there on the bridge deck, but uh, that'll have to change at some point too. Okay, let me finish trimming this off. And uh, I've set up my new bench, solid as anything, uh, with the chop saw ready to uh, cut up some of this um, V-joint. Let's get some of it on. Cheers. So this is going pretty well with the exception that I don't have enough wood, but it's cheap and it's available locally. Um, the quality of wood is not great, but uh, as I get uh, some filler on here, I can fill the worst of the knot holes. And again, I don't want it to look plastically, plasticky smooth. I just want a nice wood texture that's simple. Anyway, we'll see what it looks like. I'm fastening this. Here I was talking about, isn't it unusual that people have used nails to put this boat together? Well, I'm using some nails, uh, stainless steel nails. Um, this is sort of a throwback to my construction past. This is a 23 gauge pin nailer. It fires such tiny nails, they don't even have heads. In fact, certainly from where you are, you can't see the holes where these nails have gone in. Uh, they're tiny. So in some cases, you can just ignore them, especially in stain work and paint work. You pretty much have to give them just the tiniest fill. But anyway, it's a lovely little pinner. I'm only using 5 eighths nails here because a quarter of it, quarter inch of it is in the um, V joint and that gives 3 eighths into the surface behind it. And you can put quite a few if you like. I tend to put just a few in each board as I'm working in case there's some disaster. And then once everything is great and flat, I'll run back and forth and put rows of nails in afterwards. Anyway, perfectly adequate for what I'm doing. Cheers! We're well, just about done with this little project. Um, I have constant mixed feelings about some decisions I make in terms of whether this was good or not. Um, this material is definitely not a yacht style um, wood. Um, I'm familiar with it, so I know its limitations, and I know it can be made to look pretty good with a little bit of attention. Um, I like the texture of the uh, V-joint, the lines, and the natural texture of wood. Obviously, it's also good to have a little bit of white, because this room can be, this room, this cabin will be very, very dark by the time all the mahogany is in here. And so as I, between designing this and implementing it I had lots of second thoughts but uh, on the whole I'm very pleased um, if this turns out as well as I think it's going to I think it'll look just great um, a nice thing about it is that not much of it is actually going to be exposed I'm actually um, covering the whole wall with this paneling but really only a fairly small area of it is going to be um, exposed once all the cabinetry is built in here. 
And as a result, I think I can really put a lot of effort into making sure that those sections are filled neatly and tidily and the joints look good. Um, areas that are hidden behind cabinets are just going to stay in primer with all the knots and imperfections showing. Um, so really, all of this area down here will have a bench in front of it. Uh, opposite will have the uh, end of the galley. There'll be a cabinet up here on the starboard side. This will have a window frame around it covering a lot of it. This will have a door frame around it covering a lot of it. And I wouldn't be surprised if over there in the port corner there'll be some kind of small cabinet. So really, there's not going to be a lot of this exposed. I'm not trying to justify it. I'm pleased with it. But it's, well, like anything else, I come back and forth on it myself, whether or not I think it was a good idea. I'm going to call that done. And I'm pleased. Cheers. Good night. Okay, so back dealing with the, what I'm calling the dashboard uh, in the wheelhouse here. Um, as some of you may remember, it had a uh, mahogany veneered ply over it. And because I'm moving the companionway and filling in some holes, it needs to be replaced. So I had a stab with door skin, everyone's most despised but incredibly handy product. Uh, really thin, mahogany looking stuff, would have stained up quite nicely. I used some um, Super Super 90 um, adhesive spray adhesive plus a lot of uh, tiny little 23 gauge pin nails, 5 8 headless. And it was a disaster! It was a lumpy, ripply mess. It was a warm day, the sun came in. I couldn't, I, I put like a hundred nails holding down and uh, well that, that didn't work at all. So peeled it off, wasn't much of a peel. And I uh, had to sit here for half an hour with the hammer driving in hundreds of tiny little pricks of the uh, pin nails. Anyway, they're all gone, they're in there now. So what I'm gonna do now, similar, very similar. I have taken an entire sheet of thicker door skin, which around here is sold as underlayment. Um, again, it's this Luan type mahogany-ish sort of grain, which will look stained okay. And I've ripped it into three and a half inch strips. Well, the three and a half inch strips, when laid side to side with a small chamfer, will look sort of like kind of nice planking. Um, I put a tiny chamfer on. I'll show you how I did that. Uh, it also means by laying them down in strips, I won't have anything like the same kind of trouble I had with the big sheet. Plus, it's thicker. Uh, so I think this is going to work out just great. And I love the idea that it sort of looks like planks. Now, for you purists, I know, I could have used, well, I could have used some of this genuine mahogany up here in 3 8 um, However, that's about $290 worth of wood. And this entire sheet of plywood, which is more than I need, cost me $20. So, on my budget, I have to make some of these choices. This is not a weather dependent area. It's easy to replace if it ever goes bad. Um, I have had leaks here in the past. I think they're all leaked, uh, they're all dealt with. So, um, if you can't stand that I'm doing this with um, underlayment plywood, I'm sorry, and, and I'll do the best I can elsewhere. But uh, for here, this is what I need to do. Okay, let me show you how I chamfered it. So here we go. So to put a chamfer on the edge of my planks, so to speak, um, basically I just set the table saw blade over at 45 degrees. You can't see probably because it's just barely there. And then I set the fence on backwards so that I could just kiss the side of the blade as it sticks above the table by about an eighth of an inch. Um, that way it's pretty safe. The other way is to put the fence over here and hold the wood down against the blade sticking out. A little more dangerous. This way, um, there's almost no chance of removing a section of my thumb, which I would be uh, very disappointed to do. All right, let's take a little corner off. I don't know if you're going to be able to see on the GoPro there, uh, but there is just the slightest 16th inch chamfer on there now, uh, relatively uniform. Basically, as I lay down each plank, I'm probably, I may have to just skiff it a bit with a piece of a sanding block or something to make sure that they're uniform. 
Um, but I'm really pleased with it. Instant planking. Um, let's put some on. See ya. Well, with just a few minutes uh, at the chop saw and uh, angle set for just about 15 degrees both sides, I'm doing a dry fit, laying them all out, and um, then uh, one at a time I'll cut them and square butt cut the back end off. And uh, this should look pretty good. I'm loving the way the chamfers look. Let's get these last couple on here. There we go. So what I've done, I've centered the planks in the space. Uh, it was sort of tempting to center them on the opening, but I think it's just more elegant to have a king plank and so it means that the spacer planks on both sides will be exactly the same. Um, super happy about that. They're not too far offset here. It's actually, this is going to be cut roughly two inches and this is roughly three inches. Such a nice. Anyway, um, I'm super excited. Let's get some of this actually attached. I'm not going to do the end ones, which have to be scribed quite accurately until all these are in place, just in case there's a little shiftage while I'm doing it. And, uh, and uh, can get this wrapped up pretty soon. Let's get some stain on it. All right, this is going great. Okay, I'll show you how I've been putting these planks in. Um, really pretty straightforward. Just clean up the inner end a little bit so it doesn't have fuzzies against there. Slide it into place. And mark it off for the cross cut. And then disappear because the saw is over here. Hang on a sec. And we're back. Make sure there's no gunge on here. Let's just lay that right down. And that's good. Left handed air nailing. Well done. Okay, the last piece is made. Um, scribe for the port side. I won't go through the process I use to freehand scribe on the table saw as it is uh, not workman's comp approved. Anyway, let's uh, just slide this last one in. I doubt you can see with the sun right in your eyes there, but that one just slides right in against that little um, round member in the corner there. And we now have a new mahogany-ish. Um, for deck into whatever this thing is called. We'll call it the dashboard for now. I've only put enough nails in to tack it, so I'm gonna put some more nails in it and then put some stain on it and call it a day. Cheers. I'm nailing this down with 23 gauge uh, headless pins in stainless steel. These are teeny, teeny tiny nails, five eighths of an inch long. They're headless, so they have to put an arrow for direction on the actual strip of nails because it's really hard to tell which way is which. I'm not even sure if there is a direction that's Posed over the other. Anyway, um, the nice thing about them is that they basically leave almost no hole. I mean, I can see it by the time that stain and stuff, it'll be pretty invisible. I have a little bit of a bump here, but that's because there was a bump below that I really should have dealt with. Eh. But anyway, I'm not going to worry about it. I think it's Awesome, let's get some stain on it. I may have mentioned a few times before that I hate staining. Actually, I hate any kind of painting, to tell you the truth. Um, uh, a lot of people say, well, you hate it the way you hate doing dishes. You just don't like doing it. Well, I'm no good at it. I get frustrated and uh, I really don't put the care into it that I should. But I love the effect, so we do what we can. Looking pretty good though, I must say. I like it, I like it a lot. Nice thing about the stain is it obscures the almost mahogany grain of this Luan. Gosh, I hope I haven't made you watch all this. Not particularly entertaining. Okay. Well, here we go. All right, so that was a pretty easy project, really, in retrospect. Um, it was easy largely because I used plywood. Um, cutting it into strips and the chamfering all the edges and cutting it all up, I think probably it's a three hour total, maybe a four hour job by the time I, you know, counting cutting into strips. Got a coat of stain on here. Um, I think it's going to look just fantastic. Anyway, let it dry. Um, 
get some oil on it tomorrow. In the meantime, find someone to have a beer with. Oh, I think I know just who. Let's get some oil on this surface that, as you just heard, I've been calling the dashboard. Really, if anyone knows what this is called, really called, let me know. Okay, let's get a little oil on here. Oh, uh, yeah. Gonna look good. I won't make you watch it all. Cheers. And there we go, nicely oiled. Um, the uh, tape measure is holding down a tiny sliver that popped up. Maybe I caught it and pulled it up. Who knows? Anyway, hopefully the oil will sort of glue it down. If not, I can cope with that. Anyway, so obviously it won't be this shiny when it's done um, because I want that nice matte finish that the uh, tongue oil will give me. Um, so I'm just going to let this soak in for a bit and after I wipe down the uh, uh, cockpit, I'll come back in here this evening and wipe this down. What a great day. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.